Now, following the recent return of iconic crime drama Gangs of London, we caught up with Stephen Gillen, a former East End gang boss who's since reformed, becoming a successful entrepreneur and author in the process. After falling into a life of organised crime at a very young age, Stephen spent more than a decade behind bars and is now focused on improving people's lives so that young people don't follow in his footsteps. Well, he's been speaking to Paul about his story and the criminal underworld in the capital today. Well, I was born here, but I was taken over to Belfast when I was a young child, about six months old, Paul. I actually stayed there till I was nine in the middle of the war over there, the troubles. Then I come to East London. In many ways, I'd been uh, desensitised, but I went through a lot of um, further trauma, like children's homes, foster homes, all these things. So from uh, petty crime to organised crime, really, really quickly, really serious stuff. You know, I, I had my first gun and, you know, and that stuff was around us at age 16. So I ended up with three trials at the Old Bailey, but ultimately 17 years as a category A prisoner, which I served 11 years and nine months out of that and was still released as a category A prisoner. I mean, I was groomed into this life. It's very easy. People are you know, along this journey. I was I was susceptible to that because I was really out on the street in a way I had to fend for myself. I was, you know, I was feral in a way. Uh, you have to be accountable for your actions, you know, but these are some of the drivers of what drove me on that path. Did you ever feel like you just suddenly turned around and you, you sort of started to, to reform? Was there like a, a light bulb moment where where things changed for you? There are many epiphanies all the way through. I mean, I come to a stage I couldn't hurt people no more. I'd seen through the life for a long time. There are no friends in that life. You know, it's it's all about survival. It's destructive, Paul. It's not creative. It's not about building. It's not about giving. It's about taking. Um, there were, you know, I used to walk daily into places and I didn't know whether I was going to walk out based on I remember one time I was in a place in Hackney, you know, when the gun was put to my head. And, you know, this was by someone who wasn't right. They'd been taking a lot of drugs. I mean, I'd had guns pointed at me before, but, you know, this was a very, very erratic character, you know, and I thought at that moment that would have, that would have been the one, really. But I managed to get out of there. And, you know, when you have instances like this, it really makes you look at the life that you're living. How true a representation to what maybe you experienced do you think, or what other people are experiencing, do you think Gangs of London is? It's representative in many ways. You know, the characters and the script is drawn very well. Of course, it's there's a lot of violence in there, but, you know, but that's, that's for the entertainment value as well. But let's be honest, Paul, we know that this kind of violence less and more happens, right, within uh, organised crime and worse. So, you know, you've got your entertainment value in there uh, to drive the narrative. But I have to say it's very, very close in many areas. And when I first watched uh, season one, there was a lot of characters in there that really stuck out. And I thought, wow, you know, that really reminds me of so-and-so. And so-and-so uh, used to be like that and, you know, it's very close. Sometimes it's off. Um, another thing that I think is very brave, the series, is that it starts to ex expose the upper echelons of, you know, the financial responses to organised crime. I mean, let's face it, you know, it's only kind of coming out now with the war that the oligarchs are, you know, are being slung out of the country. But, you know, I mean, the city of London for most, you know, the super, super wealthy it's very attractive and has been for many, many years for money laundering. You're helping people now. Are you What charities, organisations are you working with specifically? If there are any, what kind of things are you doing at the moment now that you're reformed? Well, I work with a lot of uh, d different charities, really. You know, there are uh, too many to mention just in one hit, Paul. But we are developing the Stephen Gillen Foundation as well. Um, I'm also a, a CEO of Warm Media Creative Studios. We make a lot of content. We get, we do a lot of interviews. You know, we do a lot of coaching. Um, I've got a tour coming up soon, a UK tour, where we're really going to be targeting audiences, um, you know, to really support and really challenge this stuff. 
to get the right messaging frameworks and uh, instructions out to help people. And even if we can't help them, then there would be other uh, options where they could go to be supported. Because I know times have obviously changed, but what, from your experience, is the most important thing that society can do to try and help young people not get into these situations? I think the family unit is very important. You know, in the instruction that young people are getting is very important. And the opportunities and the guidance and the role models, you know, are absolutely pivotal, you know, to, to, to get the right messaging in. You know, and this is one of the things that I certainly do now. And um, we're very uh, privileged to get a message out about what this life is really like. But if there is something you could say to stop one young person falling into a life of crime in this way, what would it be? There's two bits of advice, really. One is, you know, in that life of organised crime, you have to understand there are no winners at the end of it, regardless of what you think you see. Right. But the other part of it, you know, the solution, uh, positive part of it is, look, it's really easy. Always do the next right thing, no matter how hard that may be. And I promise you, you'll end up somewhere good. And this is the journey of life. Right. You have to be very focused on the good things to let the good things in, Paul. There we are, Stephen Gillen there chatting to Paul. It's time for a very quick break now.